Hey, so today we are going to take some time and compare and unify and discuss Ericsson and Piaget at the same time. So what I've put here in my phenomenal art is Ericsson's eight stages. So our first stage has the major battle between trust and mistrust. So we're trying to develop trust or the opposite, mistrust. And what's important here is, is mom as the family member. Uh, according to Erickson. And the, the, the understanding that the child needs to develop is that the world, especially society around them, is a safe place for them to exist. So they need consistency, continuity, reliability, and if they get that, they're going to develop trust. However, um, there's also the argument that a little bit of mistrust can be important. And so at times that reliability can't be given uh, and that there's a number of um, issues that are going to get in the way, but uh, that we have to have a little bit of mistrust to be healthy and that there's a balance that needs to be achieved. And if that balance is achieved, you're going to develop hopefulness about the universe. But this is a very, very young child. This is like age of one, okay? So this is a one-year-old. And that's important for us to note in Erickson's. That first year of life, we're trying to develop that idea of is the world safe and can it be trusted? Okay, so that's important for us to note. Now, as we start to move forward in life, one of the things we have to consider is um, that as the child grows, it's gonna take on new challenges. So our second stage is about your autonomy. Okay, autonomy, my independence, okay? Um, and in this one, we're balancing autonomy with shame and self-doubt. And so this is achieved as parents allow children to take on challenges. And if you laugh at that child as it develops or you uh, ridicule it too much, it will develop shame or doubt. The issue here is you can't become too autonomous or you're never going to doubt your own abilities and you're going to jump into situations as an adult that you're wildly unprepared for and you're going to lack that, that shame for your behavior or that self-doubt. So on some level, you do have to face uh, the negative of this, all right? And this is occurring as a child is growing up until from like one to uh, three years old, okay? So at the age of three, they're gonna hit their next um, stage. And this is going to be right here, it's initiative, and the negative side of that or, or um, the, the potential downside is going to be guilt. So this means that you're willing to take on responsibilities, uh, learn new skills, that you have a feeling of purpose. And so when parents are encouraging you to go and try your ideas, um, when you come up with something, you're going to get into that. Uh, you have an ability at this age now, starting at three, and this probably lasts till about six-ish, to imagine the world around you, right? This kid has imagination. You're gonna come up with creative potential solutions to problems. If you've ever been around a three to six-year-old, they're chock full of ideas, okay? Um, but you also do have to develop guilt or you'll become ruthless and cruel in the world, right? Um, where you're like, hey, I'm always gonna take initiative here. I'm gonna get what I want, forget about everybody else. So this is really important for us to note, okay? All right, now the fourth stage is um, the idea of industry and inferiority. So am I good at things? Um, I have to pull in the imagination and dedicate myself to some learning, develop social skills, see what society requires from me. Uh, there's probably some super ego to a Freudian going on here, okay? And so this fourth stage is, is part of latency here. Okay, but it's about my industry, what can I do? And it's about inferiority. Am I the best at everything? Are there people um, who are better than me at it? Okay, so inferiority and industry. And that's important for us to note. Okay, um, if you watch children, you're gonna see differences in these two uh, age groups, okay? Um, you watch a four-year-old and they will generally somewhat understand rules, but kids over here are going to want you to follow rules in a game. And 
they're not going to want you to change those rules. So if you ever watch kids that are like six and like eight or nine play a game together, you're going to see conflict there because of that. So that's important for us to note. Um, the other thing that happens in here is this is where that child star idea comes up, right? He calls it narrow virtuosity. Um, but if this form, if I force you between, you know, six and maybe 11 um, or 12, you know, um, whenever adolescence starts to jump up here and take on those big challenges, you're not going to possess those other traits that you need in order to uh, make it through life. So the fifth stage comes in adolescence, and this is identity and role. Okay, who am I? So this is at adolescence, okay? This is coming about probably right around 12, 13, okay? And it lasts through 18, and it's about identity and role. Who am I in the world? Okay, how do I fit into society? Um, so you're taking all these things you've developed so far, and you're trying to figure out how you fit, okay? And that's part of puberty. Um, that's what's going on as you're in high school, okay? Um, and that's... That's the end of child development for Erickson. So after that, you're going to get into other ones. Uh, this is intimacy versus isolation. Okay, this is when you're looking for people in your life, um, having commitment in life to another person. Uh, and this lasts um, really into through early adulthood. And then you're going to hit middle adulthood, where it's, do I continue to generate or do I become stagnant? Okay, that's maybe where I am in life. Okay, do I generate new things versus stagnation? Maybe that's why I changed jobs at 37 years old. I don't know. Okay, maybe I was feeling stagnant. All right. Oops, stagnation. I totally added an extra couple letters to that while talking. Okay. So we have to consider that, all right? And then the last role that we want to consider is coming late in life, all right? Because Erickson takes us the whole way uh, from birth to death, and that's important for us to note, and that's into late um, adulthood. And that is about integrity. Is it about despair? Um, you're, you're, you're looking at, am I useful anymore? Do I matter anymore? Am I outdated? And, and those kind of things. So... But the major ones for the intent of what we're doing is going to focus on uh, one through five right here, because those are going to line up with Piaget's stages. So if we take a look at Piaget's stages and we come over here, this child is in the sensory motor stage. Okay, and this is our child yesterday who's looking at the cucumber pieces and trying to figure out by looking at cucumber pieces where they are when they can't see them. Do things exist in the world when I can not specifically see it, okay? Does it still exist? And so that's in the sensory motor phase. You're figuring out how your senses work, how you see things in the world, okay? Then our next is the pre-operational. And this is a good one to think about those children we watched yesterday uh, with the juice or the graham cracker, all right? And these children, right, and this one is up to 18 months, so it's going to stretch to about here on the staircase we've got, right? Pre-operational stage is going to go from roughly two to like six or seven, all right? And this is the little kids with the juice and the, the inability to see reversibility, the fact they focus on a single variable in the problem, and they don't see everything that's going on. And that's going up here really into stage three of Erickson. So it's coming from right in here to right up here, okay? Then we get into the concrete operational phase, okay? And that's going to line up pretty darn perfectly with industry and inferiority because it's going to go from six uh, to about 12. So as this child is, is climbing through step four and climbing up towards step five, that's a concrete operational phase child. Okay, this is the kid who can do a lot of things. They have a possession of some logic and problem solving, but it needs to be real world. It needs to be tangible. I can do some math, but you get better give me a cookie I can break into pieces for fraction. You better give me little tabs I can count. Okay, give me something real world. And then you get into that high school age, and this is right here where, where you would be and that's formal operational, okay? And that is your ability to imagine things as they could be, thinking about abstract thought, 
philosophy, okay, when you are able to imagine um, and you are able to create, but it's not imagination just in fantasy like a child down here. It's being able to see the world as it isn't and imagine how it could be and to discuss abstract thought. Uh, mathematically, this might be things like algebra. This is your ability to get into more complex and abstract thought, okay? And so here's my challenge to you. And I know that I'm not here today uh, to guide this discussion, but what I'd like you to do is I would like you to discuss in writing if there is an alignment, could it be possible that to some extent both of these people are correct? Maybe they're both incorrect. But am I limited in the challenges I can take on and therefore in the traits I can develop by the capability of thinking over here? Does my cognitive development limit my ability to take on certain challenges? If I take a child from pre-operational and I force them to take on a challenge up here, what's going to happen? So I want you to think about the possibility and discuss in writing uh, the extent to which Piaget's ideas could even support Erickson's. Do they contradict? And I want you to reflect deeply on your thoughts here. Go for it. You know that I respect the heck out of what you folks are doing in this class. You're doing an amazing job overcoming this year's obstacles. Make sure you understand these two. We're going to move on this week to moral reasoning. Good luck. Make sure we've got it. <laughs>